physicists showed me that elementary physics was taught in a class by itself. It wasn't what I thought of as real physics. It fragmented. Was a it was fragmented, he said. It, it was fragmented. It was a jumble of different subjects. There were certain set problems which were well known to the teachers but unknown to the students. And uh, you had to sort of plow through those in, the, with an ap in an atmosphere where people said, well, I had to go through this, so you do too, without really any, to me, logical sequence. And I fought against that while I was a student. And in the end, I wrote a textbook that um, was an attempt to uh, meet these problems. And I think that was something that worked for me, both in the textbook and in my classes. I liked the large classes, sometimes 300 students, the kind of thing that proverbially are uh, thought of as being really terrible, both for the student and for the teacher. But I thought I could make that work, and I think in most yeah. cases I did. You also rebelled against, especially at Rutgers, it was publish or perish. You know, the doctrine was, you know, that's how you would judge, and what you could produce, your experiments, your papers, not actual teaching, is that correct? Rutgers as a university throughout its history has gone from being the small colonial college started in 1766 to the major state university which is today and that clash between people who tried to keep it as a colonial college or at least as a small college to a large university that uh, tension between the two directions uh, seems to have been there throughout its history livingston college to which you went after all was started as a terrific experiment to have a small college within a large university. And uh, I thought that was an incredible new idea but that honestly, really has not been made to work anywhere. And um, I admired that enormously and that was part of that to some extent on the periphery was not really in the middle of it, partly because the physics department was so against the idea that they did not participate. The members of the physics department decided not to have anything to do with the new college, and that was one of the things, as with math and chemistry, that made it extremely difficult to have a new college. You can't really have these, a college without these fundamental subjects. Right. What were they so against? What was so unique about the, the preamble that Livingston College was supposed to be about? When the college was founded, the first advertisements for staff members, for, for faculty members, had in it that they should have a special interest in teaching. And that was radical? It, that was radical? <laughs> that was not only radical, it was considered by a number of people, particularly in those hard science departments, as a sure way to get a poor faculty. Turned out they were wrong. Some of the most lasting uh, contributing faculty members of the university throughout the ups and downs of the new college came because they saw a new atmosphere, uh, atmosphere with ferment and uh, room for experimentation. But that's not what was seen by, certainly not by the math and hard science departments, and that continues today. The only criterion for hiring new faculty members in the physics department right now is their either actual accomplishments before they come in research or their potential accomplishments. If they turn out to be good teachers and uh, interesting people, that's fine, but that's not the criterion.